Good afternoon students. I hope all of you are doing well with the concepts of current electricity. Uh, let's move on to the next concepts. Okay. So in the last class only I have told briefly about combination of resistors to you. Hmm? What happens when resistors are combined with each other. Okay. So today in this class we will study in detail about combination of resistors. And we will study some concepts of cells, EMF, internal resistance of a cell, terminal potential difference and so one more important law which comes in current electricity we are going to deal in today's class. Okay, let's start. I'll first start with the combination of resistors. You are familiar with the devices called as resistors very well. Hmm? You know how to find the value of resistors by the method of color coding and also you know the property of resistance, you know the phenomenon of resistivity very well. We have studied it thoroughly in our previous classes. Okay, So today we are going to discuss how, how we can combine two or more resistance with each other or what happens when we combine the resistance, resistors with each other. Okay, You know resistors are very small devices. In, uh, which are using, which are being used in the electrical circuits. So what what will uh, what they will do in the electrical circuit means they will offer the opposition for the flow of electric current in the circuit. Okay, so let's consider these are the resistors. Hmm? You know how the resistors will be. I'm just showing it in a simple way. So. If they, uh, if you have some resistors with you, you can combine them. You can combine them like like this. You can join them in any manner. Okay, but in a proper way, we can combine the resistors in a two manners. That are the first one is a series pattern, and the second one is a parallel pattern. We can combine the resistors with each other in a series manner and a parallel manner. Okay, so we have two possible combinations of resistors that is series combination of resistors and parallel combination of resistors. Okay, let's discuss them one by one. Okay, so when the resistors are said to be in a series combination. Okay, so now you have three resistors with you R1, R2 and R3. Okay, so now this resistor is having two ends. R1 is having two ends. R2 is also having two ends and R3 is also having two ends. Okay, so now I am combining these resistors end to end. R1, R2 to its R1, R, uh, to the ends of R1 I am joining R2. To the ends of R2 I am joining R3. Okay, so here R1, R2 and R3 are joined end to end. They are connected end to end. So the combination in which the resistors are connected end to end is called as a series combination. The resistors are said to be in series combination when they are connected end to end. Okay, for example, so you have R1. R2 and R3 resistors, resistors with you and you know the symbol which we use to represent the resistors is like this. Hmm? So when you come to the lab we will discuss more about the symbolic representations of the devices. For the resistors we are using this symbol, for the inductors we are using this symbol, for the capacitors we are using this symbol or else uh, the simple symbols like uh, for the ammeter voltmeter and the cell or the battery you are having so many symbols which you are using in the electrical circuit that we will study in detail when you come to the lab okay just you understood that for the representation of resistors we will use this symbol okay so now this is R1 hmm. so the R1, the ends of R1 are these. For the end of R1, I will connect R2. For the ends of R2, we will again connect R3. Hmm? 
So here R1, R2 and R3, three resistors are connected end to end. Hence this is a series combination of resistors. The resistors are said to be in series combination if they are connected end to end. Understood? So for this, so uh, let complete the circuit by applying a potential difference. So this is one electrical circuit in which the potential difference V is applying and the current I is flowing. The current I is flowing in this circuit. Okay. So here you see. So by this source we are applying the potential difference to this circuit and because of that potential difference we are getting current in this circuit. Okay. So whatever the main current I is flowing in R1 the same is continued in R2 the same is continued in R3. That means what in the whole circuit the current flowing is I itself means the main current I is flowing through all the resistors and it is flowing through the whole circuit but what what uh, about the potential difference v so the potential difference v is uh, across the circuit current is flowing through the circuit and potential difference v is across the ends of the circuit so for that we are having r1 two ends r2 two ends and r3 two ends means they are different ends of the current elements are different you can consider this resistor as one current element or this is one element in this circuit so this element is having two ends this element is also having two ends like that every element is having its own ends okay so the potential difference is not same for all the current elements or the potential difference is not same for all the resistors in this circuit so here for r1 the potential difference is V1. For R2, the potential difference is V2. And for R3, the potential difference is V3. Okay. The highlight in this circuit is the I main current is flowing through whole circuit and the same current is flowing through all the resistors. But the potential difference are different for the different resistors. Okay. So now, let apply ohm's law to this circuit so what happened what is the statement of ohm's law v is equal to i into r okay as i told you i is same through the circuit leave it what about v what about v so we are having v1 v2 v3 so all three are different so for v1 we have i r1 for v2 we have i r2 for V3, we have I, R3. So, three potential differences with respect to three different resistors. Okay. So, the whole potential difference, we can write it as V, which is V1 plus V2 plus V3. Understood? The total potential difference of the circuit is V1 plus V2 plus V3. And the total current is nothing but I, which is flowing same through all the resistors. Okay. So, for V1, we have I, R1. For V2, we have I, R2. And for V3, we have I, R3. Okay. So, taking I common, what you are remaining with? R1 plus R2 plus R3. Call this as equation number 1. V is equal to I into R1 plus R2 plus R3. Call this as equation number 1. Okay. Now, this R1, R2, R3 combination we are having. Okay. So, how I have shown it to you? Like this, we have the combination. R1, R2 and R3. So, instead of these three, can I use a single resistor? Single resistor? Instead of these three resistor, can I use a single resistor hmm, which gives the same effect? Means what the whatever the effect given by R1 plus R2 plus R3, whatever the effect given by R1 plus R2 plus R3 is given by a single resistor. Hmm? So for that we we'll call it as a RS. We can replace this combination. Whatever this combination is there now, this combination can be replaced by a single resistor which is called as a RS. 
R1 plus R2 plus R3 can be replaced by a single resistance, single resistor RS, which gives the same effect as combination of R1 plus R2 plus R3. Whatever the effect given by combination of R1 plus R2 plus R3, the same effect is given by a single resistor, which is a RS. So this resistor RS is called as a effective resistor or equivalent resistor. RS is an effective resistor or equivalent resistor. So what is mean by effective resistor? The single resistor which gives the same effect as the combination of the resistors. Or you can say the single resistor which replaces the combination of resistors effectively. The single resistor which replaces the combination of resistors effectively is called as an effective resistor. So instead of R1, R2, R3, I used RS and left complete the circle. So we are applying the potential difference V and current I is flowing. Hmm? So for this circuit, now you apply Ohm's law. What happens here? We have V is equal to I, V and I are same, but instead of R, we have R, S here. V is equal to I, R, S. Hmm? Let all this as equation number 2. Hmm? Now, you compare equation 1 and 2. V is equal to I into R1 plus R2 plus R3. V is equal to I into RS. By combining equations, comparing equations 1 and 2, can we write RS is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. Can we write like this? Compare equation 1 and 2. V and I are same over there. But in the place of RS, we have R1 plus R2 plus R3. So this is the equation for series combination of resistors. This is equation for series combination of resistors. Not only three resistors, you might have four, five, six, n number of resistors you can have there. But all the resistors can be replaced by a single resistor called as a RS. Okay, so there may be n number of resistors R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus and so on up to Rn. So here whatever number of resistors you are using that can be added by equaling it to the effective resistor. So we can say here that the effective resistor of the series combination of resistors is equal to the sum of individual resistances. Hmm? The effective resistor of the series combination is equal to the sum of individual resistances. This R1, R2 and R3 are the individual resistances but this RS is the effective resistance. So we can, we can say that the effective resistance of series combination is equal to the sum of individual resistances. So this is the equation for series combination of resistors. Hmm? Now, one more combination we have that is a parallel combination. We have one more combination that is a parallel combination of a resistor. So, in the series combination of resistors, we have we have arranged them in an end-to-end -end pattern. But here in the parallel combination, the pattern changes. How means? Here, one resistor R1, R2, and R3 means they are connected between a common points or they are connected in a parallel pattern. How means if we have two points A and B and we have three resistors R1, R2 and R3. The resistors are connected between two common points or resistors are connected parallel to each other like this. Like this the resistors are connected. Let's complete the circuit now. 
Again, we are applying the potential difference and the current I is flowing through the circuit. In the series combination of resistors, what happened there? I is same, but V is different. V is V was different for different resistors, but I was same. So, but in this connection, what happens for the resistors R1, R2, and R3? The potential difference V remains the same. Why? Because see here, the ends are same. Between the same common points, the resistors are placed. That's why for R1, R2 and R3, V is same. The potential difference V is same for all the resistors R1, R2 and R3. But here the current I which flows through this way will not be same for R1, R2 and R3. This will divide over here. So here it goes as I1. It goes here as I2 and it goes here as I3. So for R1 we have the current I1, for R2 we have the current I2 and for R3 we have the current I3. So, so here in the parallel combination what happens? The V, potential difference, V will be same for all the resistors but the current is different. Understood? The main important difference in the series combination and parallel combination of the resistors is in the series combination current is same throughout all the resistors but potential difference is different. But in the parallel combination V potential difference is same but current is different for different resistors. Okay. So now also you apply the Ohm's law for this circuit. So, how we can apply Ohm's law for this circuit? V is equal to IR. Okay. But here, I is not same. So, what will be the I1? V is equal to IR we have. By that, we have I is equal to V by R. But V is same. So, I1 is equal to V by R1. I2 is equal to V by R2. I3 is equal to V by R3. It means I1, I2, I3 are the different things. So, the total current I is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. So, you have I1, I2 and I3 values substitute V by R1 plus V by R2 plus V by R3 taking V common you have 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3 and call this as equation number 1. Hmm? So now what we have to do? We have to replace this R1, R2, R3 by a single resistor which is called as what that single resistor which gives the same effect by all this is called as it is called as an effective resistor or effective resistance RP. So in series combination we have RS for series. We here we have RP for parallel. Okay. Let complete the uh, complete the circuit hmm? V and I. So here you apply the Ohm's law. What we will get? V is equal to I into R. Uh, sorry, uh, V is equal to I into RP by that I is equal to V divided by RP. Call this as now equation number 2. Again, compare equation 1 and 2. What you will get? I is same, V is same, but 1 by RP is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3. So, this is the equation of parallel combination of resistors. What we get in the series combination? We got Rs is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3 and we have stated it as the effective resistance of series combination is equal to the sum of individual resistances. But what we can, def what we can define here? The reciprocal of effective resistance of parallel combination. The reciprocal of effective resistance of parallel combination is equal to the sum of 
reciprocals of individual transistors understood how to define the reciprocal of a reciprocal means opposite one by r the reciprocal of effective resistance of parallel combination is equal to the sum of individual sum of reciprocals of individual resistances so this is the equation of parallel combination of resistors so by this explanation we can also write the difference between series and parallel combination of resistors hmm? you can write it by your own you just write you just try to write the difference you make two columns series combination parallel combination so in series combination what we have end to end resistance combination here where the resistance are connected between two common points here rs is here i is same for all the resistors here i is not same here v is not same for all the resistors but v is same for all the resistors in the parallel combination and the equation we have is rs is equal to r1 plus r2 plus r3 but here equation we have rp is equal to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 and so on okay so this was about combination of resistors and one more one more point we got there is for the parallel combination we had let consider this is r1 and this is r2 you consider they are connected between two common points a and b so for parallel combination of resistors we have r1 and r2 and whatever the current moving here i will divide here as i1 and i2 and after the combination again it goes as i so here this i is main current and i1 and i2 are the branch currents hmm? i is a main current which is flowing in the circuit but when we get the parallel combination the current i divides as i1 and i2 branch currents okay so again after the combination it goes same as the main current okay so for this branch currents we can obtain the expressions let obtain the expressions for this branch currents okay so so you know for the parallel combination for both the resistors the potential difference will be same so we can write it here as i1 r1 equal to i2 r2 why because the potential difference is same and the potential difference v is nothing but i r so we can write i1 r1 equal to i2 by r2 okay now you write r1 divided by r2 take r2 to this side and take i1 to that side hmm? now add 1 on both sides 1 plus r1 by r2 1 plus i2 by i1 just simple mathematics is there nothing much okay so what you get here r2 plus r1 divided by r2 i1 plus i2 divided by i1 okay so here i1 plus i2 is nothing but what i in the series combination we got i1 plus uh, sorry in the parallel combination we got i1 plus i2 plus i3 we have written it as i so this i1 plus i2 can be replaced as a whole i yes or no so what we got here i divided by i1 is equal to r1 plus r2 divided by r1 sorry r2 hmm? this things i by i1 is equal to r1 plus r2 divided by r2 we got okay so now you have you want the expression for i1 let just invert the expression r2 divided by r1 plus r2 i have just inverted the expression i1 by i equal to r2 by r1 plus r2 you, have, you want the expression for i1 branch current so let's send this i to this side so what it happens i1 is equal to i r2 divided by r1 plus r2 so this is expression for the first branch current i1 the same you can write it as i2 equal to i r1 divided by r1 plus r2 simple derivation is there nothing much what we got we have considered one 
circuit in, in which R1 and R2 are the th R1 and R2 are the two resistors which are connected in parallel manner. For that we have I1 and I2 are the branch currents and I is a main current. So okay, so in these two resistors potential difference is same. That's why we have considered I1 R1 is equal to I2 by R2. We have just sent R2 to this side, I1 to that side, and for both the terms on LHS and RHS we have added one on both the sides hmm? so by that we got like this we have just inverted the equation and we have sent i to that cell so whatever the thing happens here the same can be obtained for i to also hmm? so this is the expression for branch current i1 and this is the expression for branch current i2 okay so this is all about combination of resistors you go through it thoroughly if you got any doubts they are accepted and they will be solved. Okay. So, 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 so far when I started the current electricity, up to that I am drawing the diagrams of a circuits. Like I have drawn the conductor over there. How I have drawn? I have drawn the conductor like this, in which electrons are moving in the direction opposite to electric field. The direction opposite to electric field. And I have applied the potential difference. Okay? And I have applied the potential difference V. So in the register uh, combination also, I have drawn it like this. And I have applied the potential difference. Every time to apply the potential difference, I am using this. I am using this. What this is? What this thing is called as? which is continuously providing the potential difference for the circuit. So this is a device. That device is called as a cell. Hmm? Cell is a device which we are using in the electrical circuit. Hmm? So what is the work of this cell? Okay. So any electrical circuit you consider in that current is flowing. The electrons are flowing. That may be steady current or that may be alternating current. In the first class only I have discussed about steady current and alternating current. Like if the current is flowing in a uniform manner. Means uniform. Same number of electrons are moving in equal interval of time. Equal number of electrons are moving in equal interval of time. Means that is steady current. Equal number of electrons are not moving in the equal interval of time means that is a non-steady or alternating current. Okay, I have given the examples also. Lightning, which we observe during the rainy season, lightning, that is not a steady current. Means the equal number of electrons are not moving in the equal interval of time. But when you think of any electrical device, like electrical lamp, there you we will observe steady current. Okay, so whenever you are considering one circuit electrical circuit if you want the steady current to flow in this circuits any circuit you consider and you want the steady current means uniform current to flow in that circuit what we have to do we have to apply a constant potential difference hmm? so if you apply a constant potential difference to any electrical circuit that electrical circuit will show steady current means equal number of electrons are moving in equal interval of time uniform manner in the flow of current is observed when when we observe when we provide a constant potential difference here so to provide a constant potential difference we we'll use a device which is called as a cell so how can we define cell cell is a device which will provide the constant potential difference to an electrical circuit hmm, to give steady current hmm. cell is a device which is used to provide constant potential difference in an electrical circuit to give steady current in that circuit. So this cell in, will convert the chemical energy into electrical energy. Cell will convert first chemical energy into electrical energy and then it will supply electric current to this. Then it will supply potential difference to this circuit. Because of that constant potential difference, we will get steady current in this circuit. 
So this is a very important device which we will use in the electrical circuit. So how we can define cell? Cell is a device which will which will provide constant potential difference to an electrical circuit to give steady current. Okay, so this cell we can uh, the cell is having two rods or plates which we can replace it like this. Hmm? This is a symbol of cell. This is a symbol of cell. We have two rods or two plates which are called as a electrodes. What these plates are called as? A? They are called as a electrodes. Hmm? So whatever the longer line is there, that is called as a positive terminal. And the shorter line is there that is called as a negative terminal. Hmm? So what this electrodes are means when you go in deeply with the combination of a composition of cell means how the cell is composed what is there inside the cell if you go on studying you will realize what the electrodes are. In chemistry you will study in detail about the cells composition of cells okay just roughly uh, I'll give one idea about the cells now you consider a container in which we have electrolyte. Electrolyte means what? It is a chemical solution. I am just giving you rough idea about the composition of cell. Means if you have this chalk, how this chalk is pre being prepared? So many number of molecules of the of this chalk piece are joined together and this chalk is composed like that how this cell is composed what is there inside the cell exactly that I am giving you a rough idea so in a beaker you consider electrolyte electrolyte means it is one chemical solution so in that electrodes are dipped electrodes are two electrodes are dipped okay so to this what happens now electricity is supplied so to this electric current is supplied so when electric current is supplied this electrolyte will dissociate dissociate means it will divide it will dissociate into its components like this is one 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 full material now it will dissociate means it will divide like this and its components we will get like that this electrolyte will dissociate and its components are releasing and the components are deposited on this electrode like you just consider one example NaCl so here as an electrode I am using NaCl so to this NaCl solution electrolyte solution I am applying the electric current so after applying the electric current, this NaCl will dissociate into its components. What are the components? Na plus and Cl minus. So when you apply the electric current to this electrolyte, NaCl will dissociate as Na plus and Cl minus. This process of dissociation is called as electrolysis. So this is all comes in the chemistry. Hmm? I am just giving you a rough idea. NaCl will dissociate into its components by applying the electric current. This process is called as electrolysis. So here we got ions Na plus Cl minus. Na will lose the electrons hence it gets positive charge. Cl will gain the electron hence it will get negative charge. So this Na plus is called as a cation. Positively charged ions are called as cations and negatively charged ions are called as anions. Hmm? So this Na plus will deposit on one electron that electrode is called as cathode. The electrode on which cations positively charged ions are deposited is called as cathode. Hmm? And the electrode on which negatively charged ions are deposited is called as anode. So this is about composition of cell. What is there inside the cell? I am just telling. Hmm? Cations are deposited on cathode. Anions are deposited on anode. So these two are the electrodes which are dipped in the electrolytic solution. Hence, so hence it has formed a cell. So these things will be there inside the cell. Hmm? It's for your knowledge just. Hmm? 
so cell is nothing but it is a device which will provide the constant potential difference to an electrical circuit to give steady current and it is represented like this the longer line is positive terminal and then shorter line is negative terminal so this cell is identified mainly by two factors it is the cell is identified mainly by two factors first is emf of a cell emi not emi it is emf okay so emf electromotive force emf of a cell and the second is internal resistance of a cell so this cell is identified mainly by two quantities first is emf of a cell and second is internal resistance of a cell okay so emf is nothing but as i already told you that cell will give the constant potential difference to the circuit so to give that constant potential to the circuit the cells should do some work so circuit means anything it may be so the work done by this cell so work done by this cell so when this cell is providing current to this electrical circuit there charges are moving nothing but charges are moving electrical current is nothing but charge is moving so now you just consider one unit charge means a single charge you consider so when this this starts working when the cell starts working the charges are moving from this end to this end and again they are coming back to the negative terminal okay so the work done by a cell for the transportation of unit charge from one end of the cell to another end of the cell hmm? the work done or the energy produced by the cell in the transportation of unit charge all around the circuit hmm? the energy produced or the work done by a cell in the transportation of unit charge through all around the circuit or simply you can define it as the the work done by a cell to transport a unit charge from positive terminal of the cell to the negative terminal of the cell positive to negative nothing but the whole circuit it comes hmm? so the work done by a cell to transport the unit charge from positive terminal to the negative terminal is called as electromotive force of the cell this is nothing but a type of work done hmm? so so most commonly we uh, the work done in the circuit is nothing but potential difference so far means the work done by work done in bringing a unit positive charge from one point to another point will take as a potential difference v only so here in this concept of cell we are taking v is equal to e this is also work done this is also work done that's why we can take v is equal to e hmm? okay and what is meant by internal resistance of a cell i have told already that the cell is nothing but what one electrolyte will be there one electrolyte will be there and in that electrolyte we will be having electrodes over there okay so internal resistance resistance is nothing but opposition hmm? the opposition offered by the electrolyte what is the electrolyte i have already told you the opposition offered by electrolyte for the flow of charges in the circuit hmm? the opposition offered by the electrolyte for the flow of charges in the circuit is called as a internal resistance why it is called as internal means the cell is there na inside that only we have the electrolyte so that opposition is giving by the electrolyte means internally the electrolyte is inside the cell and by that electrolyte only we are get, getting the resistance so that is called as internal resistance the opposition offered by the electrolyte for the flow of charges in the cell or the flow of charges between the electrodes also we can say that is called as internal resistance and that is denoted by small r this emf is denoted by e 
and EMF is measured in terms of a joule or you can say it as a joule per coulomb it is the EMF is uh, means unit of EMF is joule per coulomb or we can say it as volt the unit of EMF is volt and the unit of R is O so obviously it is a resistance and this EMF and internal resistance depends on nature of the electrolyte and the separation between the electrodes electrodes and electrolytes I have told you the separation between the electrodes or the nature of the electrolyte will decide the EMF and internal resistance in a cell okay and related to this cell we have one more definition that is terminal potential difference means when whenever we will connect whenever we will connect this cell to a circuit cell to a circuit any one circuit you consider when this circuit is closed circuit is closed means in this current is flowing okay so in a closed circuit the potential difference between two terminals of a cell in a closed circuit the potential difference between terminals of a cell is called as a terminal potential difference this positive terminal negative terminal whatever the potential difference between these two terminals is there na? when the circuit is closed at that time whatever the potential difference is there between these two terminals that is nothing but terminal potential difference and it is denoted by V and it is measured by volts okay so related to cell we have studied three important definitions EMF of a cell internal resistance of a cell and terminal potential difference okay so now we can derive a relation for relation between EMF and terminal potential difference relation between EMF and terminal potential difference and by that also we can have the expression for internal resistance R. Hmm? So for that what we have to do you just consider a circuit connection in which you have cell. Hmm? So if there is a cell means you have an internal resistance also R hmm? and for that cell we have one external resistance also that is a capital R. So for this cell we have internal resistance and also we have EMF, EMF E. So this is a cell, this is a cell C for which we have internal resistance EMF and one external resistance also we have. Okay. So here for this cell let apply ohm's law what happens if you apply ohm's law v is equal to ir is there i is equal to v by r hmm? i is equal to v by r so in this circuit v is what v is a potential difference potential difference means what the work done by the circuit work done so here when we consider the concept of cell the work done here is emf so here V can be replaced by E. I have already told. Hmm? And the resistance of the cell is we have two resistances here. R and R. So this I can be written as E divided by R plus R. So for the respective circuit we have I is equal to E divided by R plus R. So what we can write it for E? I into R divided by plus I call this as equation number 1. So this is what expression for EMF of a cell. Okay. So now as I already told you this R is a external resistance and this R is a internal resistance. But these two resistances are connected in parallel. They are connected in a parallel manner. Yes or no? So for the parallel combination we already know that the potential difference will be same. So by that 
let's consider v is equal to i into r because this r is a resistance external resistance and potential difference is same for both the resistance that's why we can write v is equal to ir let substitute here ir in the place of this in this equation in the place of ir can we write v so what we have e is equal to v plus i into r hmm? so what now what v is equal to v is equal to e minus ir so this is the equation which gives the relation between terminal potential difference and EMF of a cell and all these definitions internal resistance, terminal potential difference, EMF, cell all are very important for the examination point of view. The two marks questions okay. So be perfect in them. So this is the equation which will give the relation between terminal potential difference and the EMF of a cell. Okay. So by this expression what we can conclude say here. So V is equal to E minus IR. So E is greater than V. How means in E if you substitute IR you will get V. Hmm? Means to be equal to V we have to substitute something from V. If you substitute something from E, then only it will become equal to V. Hence, V is less than E and E is greater than V. This relation will give us E is greater than V. Hmm? So, this, this is important while solving the problems. Okay. So, now by the same explanation, we can also obtain one expression for internal resistance R. Internal resistance we already told R which is represented as a small r. Okay. So here we have got one relation I is equal to E plus R by R and by the Ohm's law we have V is equal to IR. Hmm? So here for the place of I what we have E divided by R plus R and R. Hmm? Okay, so V is equal to E into R divided by R plus R. So, at the place of R plus R, we have E R divided by V. Hmm? Let us send this R to that side. Small r is equal to E R divided by V minus R. Hmm? So, can we write it as a, I just write it here. Hmm? Up to here you understood now. So, can we write it as R is equal to E by V minus 1 into R. Just take an R common. So, this is the expression for internal resistance of a cell. Hmm? So, this is the expression which will give the relation between EMF of a cell and terminal potential difference. And this is the expression for internal resistance of a cell. Okay, so this is all about the cell, EMF of a cell, internal resistance of a cell and terminal potential difference. Okay, so now as we have studied about the parallel combination and series combination of resistors, we can also study this in terms of cells also. Hmm? So cells also circuit elements, na? Cells are also circuit elements. So, for them also we can study series and parallel combination. So, first let us study about series combination of cells. Let us discuss about series combination of cells. So, how we can, how we can uh, uh, pretend, how we can predict the series combination of cell. So, for that what we have to do? The negative terminal of one cell sh should be connected to positive terminal of another cell. Negative cell terminal of one cell should be connected to positive terminal of another cell. And here we will be having internal resistance. Here we will be having internal resistance for everything. For every cell we will be having internal resistance. So, this is cell C1, 
C2, C3 and C4 and for every resistor we have the for every cell we have the internal resistance R. Okay. So, so this is about this is series combination of cells and for here we will be having one external resistance. Let us complete the circuit and for every cell C1, C2, C3, C4 we will be having the EMFs E1, E2, E3, E4. Okay. So now what happens to the EMF of the cells? What happens to the effective EMF now think of? Okay. So effective EMF is equal to hence it is a series combination can be written as E1 plus E2 plus E3 plus E4. Why? Because this is a series combination and in series combination what we have the V. V was not same. So in the series combination of resistors we had V1 plus V2 plus V3. Hmm? So this V is potential difference is nothing but work done. But in the case of cells the work done is EMF. So here the effective EMF is equal to E1 plus E2 plus E3 plus E4. Okay. If you will be having n number of EMF, n number of EMF then effective EMF is equal to n into E. The same for the internal resistance also. R effective is equal to n into R. R1 plus R2 plus R3 up to R. Okay. But the total resistance is not only n R. The total resistance of this combination is n R plus R. Because we have one external resistance also. Hmm? So what we can write the current of this series combination of cell what is the current drawn by this series combination of cells we can write i is equal to e divided by r plus r we had we had the equation e divided by r plus r already but here in the place of e we have n into e and in the place of r plus r we have n r plus r so this is the current drawn by the series combination of cells. Hmm? So, what happens for the parallel combination of cells? As we studied series co parallel combination of resistors, let us think of combination of cells. Combination of cells between the two common points. So here also we will be having same resistors, the internal resistors R. So this is C1, C2, C3, C4, R, 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 R and we will be having one external resistors R. Hmm? Okay. So for the parallel combination of cells, in the parallel combination of resistors what we had V was same. V, the potential difference, V was same. So here also, E will be same for all the cells. E will be same for C1, C2, C3, C4. For all the cells, E will be same. So for the effective EMF, what we have? E. The effective EMF is E. But what happens to the internal resistance? In the parallel combination of resistors, what we got? 1 by Rp is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3 like that. So here 1 by R effective is equal to 1 by R plus 1 by R plus 1 by R and so on. So at the, so if there are yum number of register, yum number of cells are there, then we had it yum divided by R. Or R effective or effective internal resistance is equal to R by M. Hmm? 1 by R effective is equal to M by R. Hence, R effective is equal to R by M. So now, what we can write? The current for the parallel combination of cells. The current for the parallel combination of cells, we can write it as E because effective EMF is E only. E divided by R plus R. Small r is here. R by M 
and the total uh, the external resistance we already have is a capital R. Now, so what happens to I? I is equal to E divided by R plus Rm divided by M or I is equal to M into E divided by R plus Rm. So this is the current in series combination of cells. Okay. So this is all about cells. Hmm? So what we studied in today's class, we have studied about combination of resistors, series and parallel, their equations and equation for branch currents. Then cells, EMF of a cell, internal resistance of a cell, terminal potential difference and combination of cells. Okay. If you have any doubts in all these concepts, you are, you can ask me freely. Okay. Thank you.